this day is the final day but yet I feel the spirit of revival yes. still tarrying yes. and never ceasing right. at this time I'm going to turn this mic over to the speaker who of the hour Dr. Kelvin Thurman Rocky Mount North Carolina please come at this time let's receive him Where you're standing, God, as we stand in the middle of your awesomeness, God, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for your spirit that stands with us, that walks with us that comforts us, that never leaves us. And God, we all stand in agreement now that there is none like you. We realize today, God, that we need you. And we ask that your glory would saturate this place Move on every seat. Move down every aisle. Move on every heart today, God. Allow us to have an experience with you. A life-changing experience. Make your word real. Make your word relevant. Make your word rhema. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. I was, I was being strong. The prophetess Verdell said that she was sad. And then I was like, Lord, here we go. There's some churches I go in and I ain't gonna lie to you. I'd be ready to go home. For real. But it's something about New Life Worship Center that I have gotten attached to this week. Amen. Your hospitality, your love, your spirit, it is something that will forever be cherished in my heart. And nothing that you have done this week has gone unnoticed by me nor heaven. And I pray that God would richly, richly, richly bless you. My cousin is here. Greg, Lord have mercy. Amen. Amen. This is my mother's brother's son. So he got to claim me whether I'm up or whether I'm down. Amen. He is my cousin. Lord have mercy. Him coming over today lets me know that he probably does like me after all. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. There is a word from the Lord today. And I told you that we were going to move in four phases. Prayer. What to pray. How to pray for. Praise. I was carried in, but I'm running out. Position. We did the workshop. Now today I leave the proclamation in the house. There is a word from God. When you have it, turn with me. When you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Chronicles, the 4th chapter. 1 Chronicles, the 4th chapter. And prophet, is this right here is the most spiritual time in the service. It really is. Because this is the time where folk be flipping through their Bibles acting like they really know where the scripture is. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you like my pastor used to tell me, you can save yourself some time and frustration 
just about go into the table of contents. Amen. Oh God. God bless you. <laughs> First Chronicles, the fourth chapter. Amen. Y'all know how it is. People be flipping and flipping, yeah, and then the next person looking at them, and they be like, Lord, I done skipped over it. Where is it? <laughs> just go to the table of contents, and it'll give you the page number. Amen. Amen. Didn't these young ladies minister under the anointing of that? Amen. Amen. There is none like you. Amen. When you have it, say, I got it. First Chronicles, the fourth chapter. And we will only read two verses, verses 9 and 10. And we find these words. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the name of the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. God granted him that which he asked for. Let the church say amen. amen. The word that I want to leave in the house today is simply this. The indeed blessing rests in this place. The indeed blessing rests in this place. I want you to say to yourself, the indeed blessing, indeed blessing rests in my life. Amen. Amen. In the all-inclusive, perfect plan of the all-wise God, our Savior, there is a season for everything and a time for every purpose. Everything has been allotted a limited span of time. Everything has its due date. There is an appointed time for everything and a limited opportunity for every activity under the heavens. <laughs> Nothing in life is accidental. They are placed in strategic order by God. In Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the wise man Solomon said there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. There is a time to plant. There is a time to pluck up. There is a time to weep. There is a time to laugh. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to dance. There is a time to receive and there is a time to lose. In other words, there is an appointed time for everything under the sun. So therefore, with that being said, I want to submit to you this morning that just as God has allotted seasons for barrenness, he has also ordained seasons for blessings, and I'm safe to say the time is now. I don't know about anybody else, but I feel in my spirit that it is time that we live with a sense of peace. It is time that we live with freedom and not be bound. It is time that we stop living paycheck to paycheck. Is there anybody in here sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's time that the floodgates and the treasures of heaven be open to the saints of God. Amen. You ought to agree with me this morning and say that it is my time to be blessed. Because some of you, you done brought up the rear long enough. You've been behind the eight ball long enough. And I promise you we'll have a good time in the house this morning if there is anybody that wants to be blessed. If we look at our text, I promise you I won't be before you long. If we look at our text, I want us to shine the spotlight on this man mentioned in the text. Because the Bible clearly lets us know that he was successful in his approach to God. And he was successful in being able to secure the blessings of God. This text is not very detailed. 
in giving us much information on Jabez. All it says is that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, which means he wanted to do more and be more for God. And as we discover by the end of verse 10, God granted his request. That's the end of the verse. That's the end of the story. And for those of us who are Bible scholars, we know that Jabez doesn't stand along the sides of Moses. He didn't, lead, he didn't have a legacy. He didn't have a torch to pass. He didn't lead a nation anywhere. He can't rub shoulders with David because he didn't slay any giants. He wasn't wise like Solomon or one of the great characters of the Bible. We find Jabez hiding in one of the least read books of the Bible. And I want us to notice this morning, the first nine chapters of First Chronicles, it takes us up the family tree of the Hebrew tribes, begins with Adam, proceeds through thousands of years to Israel's return from captivity. And all we have is a long list of difficult and unfamiliar names that'll make anybody keep on turning. <laughs> but after 44 names into the chapter, the Bible says a little story breaks out. But if you notice right after the little segment on Jabez, the roll call for the tribe of Judah picks up as if nothing ever happened. You can search the Bible to and fro and you won't find any more information on Jabez. You will find first of all that he had a bad start in life. You will find out secondly that he prayed an unusual one sentence prayer and got everything that he asked for. So what was the secret to Jabez securing the indeed blessing of God? If you notice in the text, the only thing we know for sure about his past is the fact that during or shortly after childbirth, he caused his mother pain. He caused her so much pain that she decided to memorialize it in his name. In the Hebrew, the name Jabez means pain. He causes pain or will cause pain. And I'm under realization that when all babies arrive, they cause pain. But it was something about his birth that went beyond usual. When children were named, it was spoken as a wish or a prophecy over their life. And saints of God, that's why you've got to be careful in what you name your child. Yes. yes. I know that's right. Am I right about it? Yes. Because based on what you name your child, you are actually prophesying and speaking into their life. Pain was the prophecy over his life. Pain was spoken in his spirit daily. Every time the kids would say, Jabez, let's jump rope. Jabez, let's play kickball. They were saying, pain, let's play. So every day, this man was reminded about his past. But I want everybody to learn a lesson from Jabez this morning. And that is simply this. Don't let what has been spoken from your past stop what God has scheduled for your present. Right. Am I right about it? Paul said, I'm going to forget those things that are behind me and I'm going to press and be concerned about today. You ought to be glad this morning that whenever you gave your life to Jesus, whenever you repented unto God, God took your mess and your past put it in the sea of forgetfulness and then placed a no fishing sign out by it. So don't you dare let anybody who think that their life is so squeaky clean and they got heaven's extension reach in and pull out your past. Anytime the devil wants to remind you of your past, you can remind the devil of his past. You can remind the devil that he got his behind whipped and don't even have keys to his own house. <laughs> wow. Church folk bother me. I ain't gonna lie to you. They bother me. You know why they bother me? It's because they remember too much. I remember when you did this, and I remember when you did that. Let me tell you something. You don't have to tell me what I used to do. I'll tell you what I used to do. Because the glory in it is that it is a used to testimony. Have I got a witness in here? If you never had any tests, 
you wouldn't have a testimony. If you never had any mess, you wouldn't have a message. If you never had any misery, you wouldn't have a ministry. Jabez had some stuff in his past, but he refused to let his yesterday haunt and spook his today. Two days that Jabez was not worried about. That was yesterday and tomorrow. Jabez was saying, now it's my time. And how many of you this morning don't need a blessing next week or next month? You need God to do some stuff now. We don't need to start getting along after the fast. We need to start getting along now. We don't need to wait till the new year to turn over a new leaf. We need to start with our stuff now. Am I right about it? Somebody needs some payments caught up. Yeah. Well. So let's focus on Jabez for a minute. And let's look at the dynamics or the things that can bring about the indeed blessing in our lives. In the Bible, there's 31,102 verses, but only two mention Jabez. The Bible says that he was more honorable than his brothers. But don't miss this. Jabez was able to secure the blessings of God, not through a heroic act, but a prayer request. He got blessed, not because he did something, but because he asked for something. He got blessed, not because of acting, but asking. Jesus said in Matthew 7, ask, and it shall be given. The Bible said in Psalm 2 and 8, ask of me and I shall give. Mark 6 and 22 says, whatever you shall ask, I shall give. James 4 and 2 says, we have not. And tonight, this morning, I want you to put on your, as we say in Bible school, put on your exegetical glasses. <laughs> And I want you to walk with me through this text as we find out the four things that he asked for that can bring about the indeed blessing in your life. Y'all ready for it? The first thing that he asked for, the Bible says, he called on the God of Israel and said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. In other words, Jabez believed God had abundance of blessings but he also believed that some of those blessings was his. Yes, Jabez asked to be blessed. Y'all listen to me real good. He didn't ask to be rich. He asked to be blessed. He didn't ask to be married. He asked to be blessed. He didn't ask for a new car. He didn't ask for a new truck. He asked to be blessed. In other words, he asked God that his life be filled with things that the robber couldn't steal. He asked God for things that would last, things that he could appreciate and hold on to. He asked to be blessed. Even though he didn't ask to be rich, he didn't want to be broke either. Even though he didn't ask for a mansion, he didn't want a shack either. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He didn't ask for Janet Jackson, but he didn't want a boo-boo the bandit either. Y'all ain't talking to me. I looked up. I looked up and I researched. Y'all listen to me good. I researched the meaning of being blessed. And I found out that Jabez asked God to confer upon him well-being and righteousness. In other words, he asked God for credibility and integrity in his walk with God. Too many folk are aborting and forfeiting their blessings because we have been too focused on receiving the blessing but somehow forgot about the blessor. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah. We begging God for ministry, but won't minister. We got the title missionary, but we ain't on a mission. We want 
God to give us a cathedral audience, but we only got storefront power. Wow. 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 Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. In other words, Jabez was simply asking God, give me the integrity to go along with the image. In other words, he was saying, God, give me character. Let me be one that is real. And to make my point even more undebatable, he said, bless me how? Indeed. Indeed in the Latin means certainly or indefinitely. And I believe that's why Jabez got blessed because in essence he was asking God to help him not just be a Christian on Sunday. He didn't want God's fullness to go out on Monday morning. He wanted to live out on Monday what he shouted to on Sunday. And the Lord is saying this morning the same feeling that you can get on the mourner's bench, you can get on your weight bench. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> the same feeling you can get in your in rehearsal, you ought to get while you in the shower. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Can I tell you when you really have in church? It ain't when you can fall out at the church, it's when you can fall out at your house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. In other words, he asked God for a life of practical holiness. You've been fasting for 21 days. Am I right about it? When you fast, on the 22nd day, you don't go back to raising hell on the 22nd day. All right. Am I right about it? Right. The fast and consecrations is designed that the same lifestyle you live on the consecration, you are to live it when it's over. And whenever you fast and whenever you pray, you're not doing it to change God's mind. Am I right about it? Because if you fasting for somebody to be healed and it's not God's will for them to be healed, they're going to be sick and you're going to be hungry. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Am I right about it? Yes. He said, God, let you be noticed not from my lips, but from my life. He wanted a blessed life. He asked God for a life that was worthy. A life that could hold on through a storm. A life that could lay hands on the sick and they recover. He wanted a life that could speak and it be so. In other words, he wanted L-I-F-E. He wanted to live in fullness every day. In other words, he wanted a life that was wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God's will. The second thing he asked God for, he said, enlarge my territory. Ain't that in your Bible? Yes. Depending on whether you're studying Hebrew, Greek, or Latin, this is good right here. The word territory could either refer to people or places. In other words, he was saying, God, don't put me in a place or don't let me be connected to an environment that's going to stifle or limit my possibilities and potential. And so many folk have attached themselves to spiritual environments and they are slowly dying spiritually because they uncle put the windows in. <laughs> in regards to people. He was saying, God, don't let me be attached to anybody that's not going to maximize the true giftings and foster me into another place in you. You're only gonna be as great as the people you connect with. I was always told don't be around people whose barrel is as empty as yours. In other words, you want to con concern and hang around folk that can deposit some oil in your life. If you want to be a millionaire, hang around rich folk. 
the least you can do is ask questions and find out how they got there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But if you always hanging around folk that can't even pay attention, both y'all looking crazy ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Those of you young women who want to be married, the worst enemy you could ever have in your singlehood is a jealous single girl. Am I right about it? Because she ain't got no man, she don't want you to have one. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So if you want to be married and you want to be a godly woman, get around a godly example, somebody who knows how to cover, protect, and love her husband. Your destiny is tied to your connections. Am I right about it? And in this season, if we're going to walk into the indeed blessing of God, there are some folk that we've got to clean out of our contact files. Hmm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Right. Because if you constantly surround yourself with folk that can't see no farther than the end of the, their nose, they endanger instead of enlarging your territory. Am I right about it? I want to be blessed. Get around folk that's going to help you grow. Now this next thing is powerful. Because when Jabez cried out, enlarge my territory, he looked at his life and he concluded that I had to be born for more than this. And I hear God saying in the spirit right now, if you want your territory enlarged, you first of all got to be tired of where you are. So many folk in the kingdom of God has been called unstable because we like to move from one place to another and things bore us out quickly. That don't mean that we're unstable. That means that we have a hunger inside of us that's bigger than where we are. I don't just want to talk to God more. I want him to talk to me back. And not only do I want to hear God's voice, but I want somebody else to be in a position where they can hear him too. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Of course I want more money. Yeah, I do. But I don't want it just to have a bigger bank account. I want more money so that I can sow bigger seeds. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I right about it? I want him to enlarge my territory. But watch this. Jabez said enlarge his territory. No. He didn't say enlarge their territory. No. He said enlarge my territory. In other words, he knew where he belonged. In other words, he had a keen awareness of his area. And too many folk in the house of God are busy trying to get a position instead of getting in position. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 1 Corinthians 12 and 19 says, what a strange thing it would be if all of us had the same part. Everybody can't be the leader. Because if everybody leading, who follow? If everybody leading the song, who backing it up? If everybody trying to get the money, who giving it? Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody used to ask me, they say, Doc, they used to say, well, well Reb, that was when they called me Reb. Reb, why you didn't strike out in a hymn before you preached? Because that ain't my area. <laughs> <laughs> I done incriminated myself for the last time. Y'all ain't saying that. And I ain't jealous of nobody that can sing. I've just gotten to a place where I've accepted that that ain't my area. <laughs> and then this prophet was off one night. He said, oh, I got both I hear God saying he gonna give you a new song. I said, well, who's gonna sing? <laughs> Cause that won't my area. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Too many folk desire other people's places and giftings. 
And don't ever desire what somebody else has. Because what God has for you, is for you. What God has for me, is for me. Am I right about it? I remember I was working, um, I was working at a car dealership in Whiteville. I made salesman of the month nine months in a row at age 19. So by the time I got 20, the owner of the dealership came to me and he says, hey, how does keys to the building sound? How does a company car sound? He says, how does 3% of all the other salespeople's salary sound? I said, it sounds bad. He says, why? I says, because at 6 o'clock, I want to go home. <laughs> I told him, I said, I got good sense. I might look crazy, but if I have a key to the building, that means I got to come early and stay late. <laughs> and it didn't excite me to hand somebody else they check. Just give me mine and let me go. Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> In other words, that was more than I could handle. Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> to whom much is given, much is required. He said to God, Bless me based on how you made me. Yes. Anoint me based on how I am. If my anointing is only standing and grinning, passing out a program, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Too many folk are trying to be the second somebody else and ain't even been the first them. All right. <laughs> He said, enlarge my territory. The third thing he asked for that can bring about the indie blessing on your life, he says, that your hand would be upon me. In other words, he says, God, I can't do this work alone. It's too big for who I am. I need your touch. I need your hand in this. Listen to me, y'all. Anytime you see God's hand in Scripture, God's hand is symbolic of mercy and power. Yes. God's got mercy to get you out of a situation, but he also has power to get the situation out of you. That's why the marriage rate is only 36 months because when we marry somebody, we playing clean up to what the other rascal did. Right. A lot of times, when members join the church, we got to exercise the demons that the other church put in them. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And he was saying, God, I ask you that you release me from anything that I've done to anybody else and release them from what they've done to me. In other words, he says, God, come into my heart and do the releasing so that I can go forward. Right. Am I right about it? Yes. Jabez asked for God's hand in his life. And before we go any further in this message, if there's anything that you hold it on to, ask God to get it out of you right now. If there's anything that you've done to anybody, ask God to release you. Ask God to take his hand of mercy and power and that it would be upon you right now. He asked for God's hand on his life. And if we are going to be anything for God, if we are going to be a true redeeming agency for God, if we are going to grow, we've got to have God's hand on our lives. Am I right about it? Yeah. The last thing he asked for, and I'm almost done. He says, oh, that you would keep me from evil. He didn't ask God to keep the evil from him. He asked God to keep him from the evil. There are two times that the devil can wreak havoc in your life. The devil can wreak havoc in your life whenever you are tired. Mm. Yeah. And the devil can also wreak havoc in your life when you're tempted. <laughs> the devil knows those areas in your life that will cause you to be weak and will cause Lord you to stumble. 
and he wouldn't be the devil if he did not go to those voids in your life, to those insecurities in your life, to those things that you said you would never go back to. He does it and he makes them so appealing. Am I right about it? Right. But he said, God, keep me from the evil. In other words, he was admitting to God that he was not perfect and had a probability to sin. He was asking God to not let him be confronted with the very things that would allow him to become weak. He admitted to God that he was not mistake free. And some of our prayers are not being answered because we come in at God dishonest. And when you come to God, the Bible says that you can go to God as a friend. When you go through those situations, you know how you pick up the phone and you call your girlfriend? You know how you call your frat brother? Now you call even your pastor. God says, come to me in the same way. Because I am your friend. And God will honor you when you stop fronting and be real and admit that you've got some setbacks, some flaws and faults in your life. And admit that there's some things that are not all together. Am I right about it? It bothers me how we can strut in the church like a peacock, like we ain't never done nothing wrong. And when it comes to other folk needing grace, we don't give it because we think that we are so above sin. Yes. The next time you read somebody, they write for the storm that they in, you better be careful because one day you might need that same mercy. Am I right about it? Yes. Lest you fall into it on your own. Be careful how you stand on somebody else's grave and resurrect yourself. Am I right about it? Yes. He said, God, keep me from the evil. And some of y'all ought to be glad that the rascal didn't take you back. <laughs> because God was keeping you from evil. Yeah. Wow. You ought to be glad that they don't answer your text. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Right. And that they dumped you and found somebody else. Because yeah. now that somebody else got to deal with that rascal. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God was keeping you from evil. Am I right about it? I'm going to my seat now. New life, I thank you. But with Jabez asking for a blessed life, ministry opportunity, with him asking for prayer, power, and mercy, and deliverance from temptation, he broke through with God. In other words, his pleas turned to praise and worship. And you got to understand this morning that the very nature of God is to have goodness in such an abundance that it overflows on unworthy saints. If you think of God in any other way, then it's time you change the way you think. Because God's ability to show himself is not limited by his resources or his power. God's ability is limited by what we allow him to do in our lives. And I come by today to tell you that there's nothing wrong with asking God to bless you. And if you're going to ask God to bless you, you might as well do like Jabez and say, God, if you're going to bless me, you might as well go on and bless me a lot. Yeah. Jabez realized that it was his time to be blessed. Yes, I can just hear Jabez saying, this morning I've been laughed at long enough. Yes. I've been in pain long enough. Amen. I've been kept from my blessing long enough. Right. And how many of you feel like it's your time to be blessed? Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I've been broke long enough. I've been average long enough. I've been overlooked long enough. And now it's my time to be blessed. Some of you been in trouble long enough. You've been without purpose long enough. You've been pushed aside long enough. And I come by to tell you it's your time to be blessed. You've been behind long enough. You've been confused long enough. You've been hurt long enough. And it's your time to be blessed. How many of you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Well, the Lord sent me by to declare and decree that this be your season of overflow. You've just walked into your season of more than enough. The enemy's grip has got to be loosened. And before you have a breakup or a breakdown, God is giving you a breakthrough. Somebody shout, bless me, Lord. I ain't going back to the pawn shop. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I ain't going back to court. I ain't going back to the altar getting prayed for the same thing. I'm going to believe God at his word. And I'm going to make up in my mind that no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I'm going to make up in my mind that every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. I'm going to make up in my mind that by his stripes I am healed. For those of you that have wet your pillow with tears, your weeping has a one night reservation because in the morning joy is going to come. Somebody shout bless me Lord. Well if you want God to bless you, then you've got to bless him. Is there anybody that can magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together? Because when praises go up, blessings come back down. I want to ask you a question this morning. Has the Lord done anything for you? Has the Lord brought you through any situations? Well, you ought to give him some glory. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Didn't he put food on your table? Didn't he tell death to come back later? Well, you ought to bless the Lord. I'm trying to control myself. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. God, I thank you for saving me. Is there anybody that can say thank you this morning? Can you look back over your life and see all that God has done? You ought to give him some glory. And this is only for desperate folk. Is there anybody that need God to move on your situation? Well, you ought to give God an ugly praise. You ought to give God a crazy praise. You ought to open up your mouth. And you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that the bed I laid in won't my cooling board cover on my winding sheet. Thank you, Lord, that I got blood running warm in my veins. Thank you, Lord, that you came by and shook my bed and you woke me up this morning. Is there anybody blessed this morning? Well, you ought to create an atmosphere where God can freely move. You ought to tell your neighbor, I'm blessed this morning. I'm sound-minded this morning. I'm prayed up this morning. I'm full of joy this morning. I'm full of peace this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Tell the five people and tell them that I am blessed. Tell them that the blessing rests on me. Tell them that anything I want, all I got to do is open up my mouth. And God said I can have it. Is there anybody blessed this morning? Is there anybody blessed this morning? I said, is there anybody blessed this morning? I ain't going back to the old way. I'm going to walk in the newness of God. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The indeed blessing rests upon me. The indeed blessing rests upon me. Walk in the blessings of God. Do what God tells you to do. And I promise you, it will rest upon your life. If you never hear my voice again, 
just remember that it is well with the Lord and you are blessed indeed.